All right, well, here we are. Round two of UBO testing at Stevens V Company. Um, we got a new product here everyone's chattering about. We wanna know if it's consistent and how it works and all that stuff. So we've got some queens we tested last year. We're gonna test again, see how it compares. We've got Chris Summers, Natalie Summers here, Dawn behind the camera making sure that we stay on task <laughs> and everything's straight. So many thanks to Dawn. Um, we'll just see how we do. If you don't know what UBO is, it stands for unhealthy brood odor. Basically we're spraying stress pheromones on brood frames and we're just seeing how the bees respond. So we'll see how it goes. One thing it mentions in the instructional manual that you absolutely want to do is make sure that this little o-ring has food grade grease on it um, whenever we've tested we've done upwards of 70 tests and thankfully i had a second gun handy because it would have been an issue what i noticed is <clears throat> and kara mentions this the hexane is really hard on this little o-ring that is in the applicator you really want that to be really well greased uh, with food grade grease it's really easy to do um, you just unthread that, grease the o-ring, and then you just tighten it right back up. It's pretty simple, uh, but that's something you really want to do. I, I've had, when doing large numbers, a backup gun that I keep greasing. That way when one starts to get sticky, um, you can just switch guns. Just to touch on the process here, because it's really important that you keep this consistent. Um, we just have a really simple log here you don't have to have complex data you just need accurate data our colony id i have tree tags on the bottom board whenever they're pulling the frames that are white or purple eyed pupa they'll write the number on top of the frame that way we know where the score goes um, after we spray let the hexane evaporate spray let the hexane evaporate third spray Whenever they're taking the frame to put it back in, we write that time down. Really simple, time in, and then we give them exactly two hours. And we'll pull it out on the dot. You need to pull it out on the dot um, to have a standardized test. You know, you could pull it out later. That's not really fair. It's not fair to your breeding program. It's not fair to people that are buying your queen. So in order to stay consistent, you need to pull it out exactly at two hours. Don't use smoke. <laughs> I always forget that. Um, <laughs> it could mess with the test. Obviously, whenever you use smoke, it covers up alarm pheromone. Well, smoke can cover up unhealthy brood pheromone as well. So do not use smoke if you can. I believe that's about it. Um, one little tip that we found, I've learned this from Kara. Whenever you put the ring over your brood, and you spray three times after you let it evaporate each time. Um, we'll make a little mark up on the frame straight up from where you put the ring because some of your colonies, probably a lot of your colonies, aren't going to respond to this. It's not an easy test to pass and then uh, it's hard to find. So if you have a mark on your frame, you pull your frame up and you know straight down from that mark that's where your ring is and then you can usually see the indent. So a few things we've learned and again I can't stress enough make sure you grease your o-rings because that will shut you down uh, in the middle of testing <laughs> Ooh, that's hard to top Chris all right so we're not gonna throw this in the dirt <laughs> all right here. first things first Take our pick so we know what it looks like because sometimes there'll already be a, a hole or two missing. And we're going to give it three sprays. You can see how it looks wet like that. You just want to let it evaporate with that hexane. Evaporate before you spray again so it'll take you just a little bit. See it's starting to dry out. You said hexane. What what is hexane? That's the carrier. So it's diluted in hexane. Those synthetic pheromones. Go ahead. Yeah, we leave a little. 
mark there too, that way you can find where your circle was really easily. And the number's on the top of the frame? The third spray. Yep. Okay, third spray, so mark the time. All right, we're pulling these frames right at the two hour mark. You have to pull it right at the two hour mark or else it's cheating. <laughs> and you can give your bees longer and sometimes you'll get a better response. You know, some people will probably do that for pictures and stuff, but you need to pull it at two hour mark for the integrity of your breeding program to keep it consistent exactly two hours. So here's one that we pulled. Beautiful sample Ooh. here. This isn't what you're gonna normally see, but um, our bees are a little crazy. <laughs> they pulled most of it out. A normal, really good sample that you'll see is just uncapped, so you'll see the pupae in there. Um, don't expect to see that. Um, you might, but it's not the norm. That's an extremely hygienic colony. So whenever you go back to take the picture, uh, uh -huh. yep, you've already got the number. So we put the number back on here. We replace exactly where this was that way you can see the before and after because there might be a couple holes you know before you took the picture that's normal and then we go back and take the after picture there's a couple apps that Kara uses one's free i would ha i don't remember it off the top of my head i would have to look maybe we can put that in comments or in the uh, description potentially but you could always ask her and get it from the horse's mouth which is probably better anyway <laughs> And then we replace it. We put our, this is our data sheet. You can see where we're pulling everything. Colony ID number. We try to aim for right at two hours. We're within a minute on these. So any little extra notes, you know, like we put our temperature. Not that that's really something you need to worry about, but it's just kind of for our information to see if we see any variation in the test. Um, it's warm today, 87 <laughs> degrees. Last time we tested, it was like 93. Poor Kara was out here. Um, and then you can score, you know, if you want it right down to the percentage, you can use those apps um, that compares the before and after pick. Simple as that. All right, this is probably what you're gonna see in most colonies that you test. You can kind of see where the ring was here and they just completely ignored it. And some, it's weird, some bees that are, have been VSH tested and score pretty high on a VSH test, sometimes they don't respond really well to it. So it kind of makes me think that, well, obviously these traits are more complex than what we originally thought, that there's overlap with UBO and VSH or SMR, but they're not the exact same thing. So we wanted to give a realistic look at, you know, even Corey Stevens bees, <laughs> some of them do not score high. And if you have unselected bees, which if you order just random commercial queens, most of them are not selected for VSH hmm. and are not selected for UBO, which is a relatively new test. Uh, so that's the norm. This is probably what you're going to see a lot of. I would not get discouraged over that. And you can tell the brood pattern's great. Um, it's a good colony, but uh, if they don't have VSH and they're not really high on the hygienic test, you're probably going to have to knock mites off of them at some point. They probably just don't have the mechanisms to control mites or mite reproduction. So if that's what you see, don't get discouraged. So we're getting close to wrapping up UBO testing here today, round two. We've got some really good scores. Um, it's exciting really to have a new technology. I was talking with Don just a little while earlier about how the industry has used freeze-killed brood for a while and that that's like 1950s technology. <laughs> I mean, it's old school. So I like that Kara and company are thinking outside the box and starting to use pheromones to elicit behaviors. Um, I'm just anxious to see where this goes. Even if this isn't the end all be all, I think she's opened a pathway of thinking that could really yield some awesome stuff. Um, we're not going to quit Harbo testing. I think SMR measuring and VSH is our gold standard. It's what we've stuck with. I've been a VSH hoarder for a while and a VSH breeder. Um, that's what we're going to stick with. That's our gold standard. But we're looking forward to continuing testing this and any other products that may come out to further the selection of mite and disease resistant stock 
Um, it's not that we don't need good miticides, but we don't need to rely on them completely. So it'll be cool to see where science and testing and breeding takes us in the next five to 10 years. Exciting stuff.